and just say welcome. Thank you so much. I am Kathy Sipple, and you probably haven't heard from me a long time if, if you're used to going to uh, Northwest Indiana Green Drinks in Michigan City, where Nancy Moldenauer has been presiding along with a great group of volunteers for quite a long time. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Nancy to let her really be the, the hostess with the mostess. But she and I started talking within the last month or two, and we just said, you know, we really miss green drinks. She and I have been meeting online uh, to work on the project that's actually going to be the focus of our talk tonight. And we just said, why couldn't we do a virtual green drinks? So this is our very first try, and we're going to give it a shot. So Nancy, do you want to say a little bit about the, the reboot? Sure. Um, I would just like to say welcome to our first virtual Northwest Indiana Green Drinks. And I'm so pleased that so many of you could join us this evening. Um, I want to recognize my other teammate that's here is Andy um, Jans um, Davis. And then also I see um, Dahlia Ziggis, who's a city councilwoman from Michigan City. So um, just welcome everybody. I'm glad you're here. And I'm very excited about this new format because the question that people ask me the most is, I can't be there on Thursday night. Are you recording it? Can I listen to it later? So the answer I can say to all those questions is now a resounding yes. So I think this is gonna be great for everybody and our ability to not only expand within all of Northwest Indiana, but this means the state of Indiana and the whole United States will have access to these wonderful um, educational and engaging programs that we've been having over the last seven years. So um, just thank you very much. I'm gonna give a really quick plug for our next um, program because many times I'll forget at the end. So mark on your calendars, November 5th, which is again, the first Thursday of the month from 6.30 to 8, 8 p.m. Um, Zach Schlack from um, SUN, which stands for Solar United Neighbors, will be our presenter. And we're very excited to announce that he has chosen Northwest Indiana, Lake Porter, and LaPorte counties to launch the ability for people to collectively um, select and install solar panels on their homes and small businesses. So thank you very much. And Kathy, thanks for pulling all this together for this evening. Sure, absolutely. Really excited to have Zach as well. And uh, looking forward to that one. Just want to say, if you've got some green drinks speaking ideas, I know we're probably a little built up, you know, backed up, I should say, from wanting to meet with one another and talk. So you can either reach out to Nancy, myself, and we really want to build that calendar, you know, for the rest of the year and into next year. And uh, so I can see us having a brainstorming session around that and just doing all kinds of great things. We could even maybe do it more than once a month, who knows. But for today, just to get things started, if you're not used to Zoom, it seems like a lot of people are used to Zoom getting you know, into coronavirus mode and virtual meetings. But if you're not used to it, just please again, keep yourself on mute unless you're speaking. There will be time for Q&A after our guests are finished speaking. So just um, if you could keep yourself on mute so that we can preserve the quality of the recording, that would be great. You can go ahead and use the chat feature, though, to talk with one another or to post a question. If you don't want to forget your question, you can go ahead and drop it in the chat. If it seems really super relevant to address it in the moment, I, as the moderator, will you know perhaps ask one of our guests to address it. Otherwise, we'll get to it in the Q&A. And then I think the rest we've already been through. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. So I want to just talk a little bit about this new group that's bubbled up out of some momentum that's been created over the last you know, year or so that has named itself Northwest Indiana Region Resilience. And uh, there are a few team members on here. And actually, Nancy's a member, and I'm also a member. So besides us, there are additional team members. Uh, but where this came out of, I just kind of want to tell the origin story a little bit. Nancy, you and you might have to unmute yourself and tell me, you and a few members uh, from Michigan City went to the Earth Charter Indiana Climate Leadership Summit two years ago. Is that right? 
three two years three, ago. Um, years there ago. were there were eight of us, and please don't make me name off everybody that was in my Subaru Ascent because I was concentrating on driving. <laughs> but um, Pat Boy, who's our state rep state representative, went with us. Um, mm, Dennis um, Britton. Sacha Gee Burns, um, Nancy Nichols, um, I believe Deborah Chubb was with us too. Um, oh, um, goodness gracious! You should have told me you're going to call on me. Oh no, 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 that's okay. Well, you uh, don't. Steve, Steve Perkins. Perkins. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I'm I'm at a loss. I know I skipped over two people. At I'm, least. I'm sorry. I did not mean to do that to you, but I just wanted to really acknowledge that Michigan City took a big step in leadership by attending that summit. And I think it was at that summit that you found out about the, the Hoosier Resilience Index and the Environmental Resilience Institute, and that you guys really you know, got aligned very quickly and got your mm -hmm. act together so that you could apply for funding. I think NIPSCO helped you fund having an extern, right? And that was last year? Okay. So um, it was last last summer, right? We were one of the first group of fourteen that did the um, greenhouse gas emissions inventory. Um, yes, you're correct. Good, good. And then um, Gary also um, took that step. I don't know if they were at the the climate summit as well, but Michigan City and Gary were really the leaders in this uh, in this movement, this initiative. They joined the um, Indiana University Resilience Cohort uh, last year, as Nancy said. And in that first year, they had an extern assigned to them that did a greenhouse gas emissions inventory. So we already have leaders. I'm sorry, what was that, Nancy? Did you say something? No, okay. It might have been somebody new coming in that was not muted. Okay. Um, in any case, you know, I was kind of jealous. I'm like, oh, they had it together. They're, you know, they've got their act together. So I attended the Climate Leadership Summit last year, and I think we had about eight people then as well. And I think it started brewing a little bit. Like, we're like, we need to bring this momentum to the region. We need to scale it. Connie Wachala, she is on the call right now, and I'd love for Connie to unmute and just say hi. Connie, you, you really lit up from that initiative. And from that, you brought uh, a lot of juice into making the climate action blitz happen in Highland, Indiana in February 15th of this year. It was almost like a mini climate leadership summit. And I know there are other people on the call too that were very engaged and helpful. Uh, Kathy, Corinne, let me unmute you. Oh, I thought you asked to be unmuted. Just please unmute yourselves if you'd like. Um, let's see, Elaine was a big help in that. We had a huge, huge group of people that helped with the climate action blitz. I'm not even gonna try to name all the names. It was just absolutely amazing. Over a hundred people signed up for that event from 13 different communities around Northwest Indiana. We did have a snowstorm, so we actually had 65 people or so uh, come and we all broke out into tables at the end of that event um, and said, hey, you know, this was again, February 15th. So if you recall, this is kind of before pandemic times. We had stated that our, our purpose at the end of that was to go forth and approach our, you know, local governments and ask them to pass some kind of a climate action resolution. And then of course, like, you know, city meetings got shut down. It was all very unknowable for a while. And then around April or May, I started meeting with some of the people and we resumed the momentum and we came upon the shared aim of doing a region-wide greenhouse gas emissions inventory. So Connie, Alex, I don't know if you want to say any words or um, another huge success story out of that momentum where we tried to group people by table and zip code or city was the... Um, Highland Neighbors for Sustainability. And I know we've got a couple of members on there now. So I just want to really give a big shout out to Highland. I think they've been awesome at organizing and really great at meeting. You know, if that, if that cluster of people from Highland wouldn't have gotten together, which includes Alex, who I believe is on, Connie and um, Kathy, 
anybody from from your group want to just say a few words? Yeah, um, I, I uh, Kathy, you gave such a, a great summary of the climate action blitz. Uh, I would only say uh, that our Highland table had 12 people, and uh, there, there I met. I hear myself. There I met uh, Alex, who has graduate degrees in environmental sustainability and urban development. And I met Kathy, a teacher and longtime environmentalist. And our group agreed to keep meeting and we pledged to take a climate action resolution to the town council by Earth Day. And uh, we were able to meet two more times. We had grand plans. We were going to have all sorts of neighborhood events to welcome other residents to join us. We were talked about going door to door, leaving literature, uh, telling who we were. And then the pandemic hit and shut everything down. Uh, and I'll let Alex talk about uh, what we did from there. Um, yeah, so we, uh, the Highland, the Highland group, uh, we started calling ourselves Highland Neighbors for Sustainability, and we continued to meet and, and uh, brainstorm what we wanted to do here locally on sustainability. Um, you know, the, the NWI Climate Action Blitz, um, they talked about a lot of things uh, in terms of how we can get involved locally on, uh, on environmental sustainability issues, and we thought the uh, Indiana University Resilience Cohort um, was a was a good uh, start to that um, in terms of uh, starting off with a greenhouse gas inventory. Um, so we started to do research around that and um, uh, and just uh, develop different outreach materials that we could um, you know start to share with our um, council members here in Highland. Um, and as we continued to organize, we realized, well, what about what about our neighbors, um, you know, Munster, Hammond, or, you know, East Chicago, um, you know, who also attended um, the Climate Action Blitz? Um, you know, we all breathe the same air, we drink the same water, um, you know, we're a very uh, uh, interconnected uh, region, um, and um, wouldn't it be great if we could work together as a region to uh, uh, make advances in sustainability. Uh, we're, we stand to benefit a lot more if we do this as a region um, because okay, not, um, um, I think I'm being, I think, okay. Uh, not, all, uh, not, you know, the pollution doesn't, uh, you know, just stay in one particular community. It, it um, you know, it, 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 uh, it travels across political boundaries. Um, so uh, uh, we, uh, we started to, reach out to other neighboring communities uh, and uh, tried to work together and see how we could um, do this as a region. And we saw um, the regional body um, for Northwest Indiana, um, the Northwest Indiana Regional Planning Commission that represents Lake County, Porter County and LaPorte counties um, as a great uh, potential partner um, to uh, potentially um, participate in the Resilience Cohort uh, Program um, as a region, and um, that's um, that's where uh, we ended up. We started, um, uh, you know, continuing our organizing efforts regionally, um, and um, now we're here today. Thanks, Alex, for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, great summary, and we're just so blessed to have you. Um, so let's see. I think next up. I have Erin uh, Lasher from IU, and she said, I didn't prepare a PowerPoint. I was not great at my communicating with her. <laughs> but the fact is, she already prepared PowerPoints. We've, we've had this PowerPoint shared by our, our IU partners several times. And so this is one that Erin um, and or Andrea may have prepared. They've been super helpful with us um, to talk with Kathy Luther, who I want to also acknowledge is on the call. Thank you so much. Um, and oh, before we go to that, I'm so sorry, Connie has reminded me that Kathy Perrin has information about other initiatives. So Kathy, I see you are unmuted now. Could you tell us a little bit more before we go into this slide about the, the Highland Neighbors for Sustainability? 
Well, Alex and Connie have just been amazing meeting with everybody all over Lake County and beyond getting people. So we were trying to think of what can we do next now that hopefully we can get the, the greenhouse gas um, emission inventory done. Um, so we're working on some pollinator projects and, um, and trying to um, and get some more green space into Indiana too. So uh, we're, we just started possibly getting a committee together to go to the schools and see if we can get some, some pollinator projects going that way. Well, thank you so much for that. I mean, personally, I transformed my lawn during the spring <laughs> into a, a micro prairie with all kinds of pollinators. So I, I personally love that initiative. And I think that would be a great topic for another future green drinks is just how to do that to scale. So thank you for your work on that, Kathy. Is there anything else you'd like to share? No, I can't think of anything right now. Thank you. Thank you for all of your contributions and for being here tonight. We really appreciate it. Okay, and thank you, Connie, for reminding me because I got a little out of order. But so I want to turn it back over now to Aaron and, and Kathy Luther. I'm just going to kind of talk through the slides because really we couldn't do it without either of these partners, Northwest Indiana Regional Planning Commission. For those of you who don't know of their acronym, NERPSI is what a lot of people call them. Kathy Luther, I know, holds down so many roles over there and is really pretty overworked as it is, but she was um, gracious enough to entertain the idea of talking with this, this group, Northwest Indiana, um, you know, the, 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 oh my gosh, region resilience, to talk with her about, um, you know, the, this crazy idea that we had about doing a regional greenhouse gas inventory. And by the way, folks, this has never been done in Indiana. It's only been done in a handful of metro areas across the country. So it's just really, really pretty awesome and exciting to be a part of this. So Kathy, Aaron, I'm just gonna kind of ask you guys to, to talk through this as we go. Um, if you both wanna unmute yourselves and we can kind of um, talk about, you know, what is the cohort overview, a little bit about the Resilience Institute. So Aaron, this might be a good one for you if you're comfortable with it. Yeah, um, I created these slides so I can do the whole presentation if you'd like, but um, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Erin Lasher. I work for Indiana University's Environmental Resilience Institute. Um, I am not from Northwestern Indiana. I'm actually from Southwestern Indiana and currently reside in Bloomington because I work for ERI and I'm a student at IU. But the Environmental Resilience Institute was founded a few years ago in response to IU President Michael McRobbie's grand challenge. He created a few of these to address complex issues across the state, but one that he created was the Prepared for Environmental Change grand challenge. And so out of this, our organization came to be, and we primarily focus on research but we do have a lot of uh, communication and implementation work that we do. Um, I am personally on the implementation side of things. I'm not a researcher, not a scientist or anything like that. Um, and so we try to really connect with local governments across the state and provide them with resources and programs to help them prepare for environmental change. One of the programs that we do is called the Resilience Cohort, and this is the program that I work on. So we launched in 2019. Um, that was the program that um, Nancy was talking about earlier, um, and Kathy, both Michigan City and Gary participated in this. Um, and so our first year focused on these 14 Indiana communities um, conducting community-wide greenhouse gas inventories. Now we're in our second year and we're helping um, 11 of these cities who moved forward, Gary is one of them, um, develop climate action plans. So they're really digging into solutions and reduction strategies and engaging their communities in order to come up with solutions and ways that they can start to reduce their emissions as a whole. If you want to go to the next. Yep, there we go. So as I mentioned, the 2019 cohort had 14 Indiana communities, um, two Northwestern Indiana communities, but it really ranged from 
one of the smallest towns in Indiana, Oldenburg, I believe their population isn't even 600 people, um, up to the second and third largest cities in the state, Fort Wayne and Evansville. Um, this program also partners with another IU program called the Indiana Sustainability Development Program, which places IU students in summer externships across the state. Uh, Michigan City and Gary have both had ISDP externs before. And so the Resilience Cohort in 2019 had eight Indiana University students placed with cities to do these greenhouse gas inventories. And one exciting thing about this program is that it's actually expanding to all IU campuses in summer 2021. So this includes Indiana University Northwest now. But okay, so we've talked about greenhouse gas inventories. We've kind of thrown that term out there, but not necessarily defined what it is. So essentially it's a process to estimate emissions within a defined boundary, whether that's a town boundary, a city, county, or even a region like you all are talking about. And so it looks at a bunch of different sectors across the community, but the main categories are industrial energy, residential energy, commercial energy, transportation, solid waste generation and disposal, um, water and wastewater, and then that kind of residual category of upstream impacts of activities. Pretty much the only thing that's included in that category is the uh, emissions associated with the leakage uh, of natural gas distribution. But as you can see, this chart shows a highlight of what Richmond's um, inventory was in 2018. So they emitted about 845,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide in the year 2018. And industry, industry was a pretty dominant factor in that. Um, Gary also had a very dominant industry result. So that's definitely something to consider up in Northwest Indiana. So in 2021, we are pivoting back to our uh, greenhouse gas inventory cohort model, and we are currently recruiting and have been working very closely with the Northwest Indiana Region Resilience Team in order to help you all get on track and get your regional application uh, in. And so this is going to focus again on the community-wide greenhouse gas inventory, and all communities will have the option to do a local government inventory as well which just provides a bit more detailed look at emissions associated with the government entities operations. So it may look at like vehicle fleet, the buildings and facilities owned and operated by a local government, uh, sometimes looks at employee commutes. So it, it just provides a bit more of a specific look at that subset of emissions. Um, so the cohort will run from April to September in 2021 and all cohort participants will uh, get access to ClearPath, which is the, oops, sorry, my dog just stuck his paw on my keyboard. <laughs> um, but ClearPath is kind of like the industry standard software for local level uh, inventories. And it's provided by an international nonprofit known as ICLE, Local Governments for Sustainability. We partner with the USA chapter in order to get trainings and have this software and their resources available to all cohort participants as well. You get training, on the job training and support from both ERI and ICLE. And you also have the option to apply for a 10 week summer extern through this ISDP partnership that I was talking about earlier. So uh, I think that pretty much provides an overview. Kathy, did I miss anything? Uh, I think you did a great job. Um, you know, and a lot of people wonder well, what the heck does this cost? The cool thing about doing it as a region is that we have the opportunity to share the cost a little bit. I mean, it already is very affordable compared to doing this through an outside consulting firm which correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, Aaron, but I understand that could be anywhere from, you know, 15,000, 25,000 potentially if somebody hired a consulting company. And with this, what you're seeing is the, the ICLE uh, software uh, subscription, as Aaron said, and then there is an additional contribution for the cost of the intern which IU generously makes more affordable through their, their grants that they find and help uh, you know, offset. 
And then there is some administrative costs with NERPSI because they've got to find desk space and find phones and things like that if they are in fact housed there. You know, we, none of us know what will be the situation with uh, COVID and so forth. Uh, there were actually externs that ended up working remotely this summer and it, from talking to them and getting to know them, it seemed like they did very, very well. So maybe that cost could be reduced. But anyway, we were kind of putting together those costs and trying to help uh, with some fundraising aspects to make it even more affordable for communities. But no, Aaron, I think you did a great job and um, thank you for making your contact information available. So you see Erin's information here on the slide. And then she works very closely with Andrea Webster, who came to our, our Climate Action Blitz back in February. I first met her at the Climate Summit the year prior. And I know she's just really endeared a lot of the people here in Northwest Indiana to her and the program and all these resources that IU offers. And I love that they're now going to also make that available, or excuse me, make the internship possibility available to even students who are here local at IUN. At Earth Charter Indiana, we actually have an IUN intern, Caroline Lofgren, who lives in Griffith, and she's been a really key member of this team. I do want to quickly give a shout out to some other team members who are on. You've heard from Nancy, you've heard from Alex, you've heard from Connie. And I know Blake was on, I think he just had to jump off the call. Um, Alyssa, I believe was on. I don't know if I see her, yeah, she's still on. Uh, but you can go to our NWI resilience, uh, re regionresilience.org site and find out all about our team members. It's constantly growing. Walt is on here, Walt Mueller. Mueller. He's from Valparaiso and he just joined last week. So if, if this sounds like something you'd like to meet up with and, uh, or excuse me, meet our team and be a part of, we certainly encourage you to do so. But now I'd really love to open it up to questions. Um, basically on September 17th, well, let me back it up. September 3rd, Kathy Luther heads up the NERPC Environmental Management and Policy committee. I hope I've got that right, Kathy. I'm going to unmute you now. You had a little bit of background going on there before, so I did um, mute you, but I'm asking to unmute you now. <laughs> We'd love to hear from you. So she stepped us through that process, and the Environmental Management and Policy Committee at NERPC voted unanimously to approve this initiative and bring it to the uh, NERPC Executive Board, which met on September 17th they passed a resolution which now outlines how communities can join the cohort. And when we say communities, we really mean any unit of government. It can be a town, a city, or a county. So far, uh, we have had a uh, resolution signed by Lake County Council and commissioners, Porter County commissioners just this week on Tuesday uh, voted unanimously to join the cohort and uh, LaPorte County, I believe it was council. Nancy might have to correct me on that. And we got our very first um, city letter of commitment that I'm aware of from the city of LaPorte. And that happened just yesterday, I believe. So Kathy, we would really love to hear from you. Uh, You're switching. Like she's mentioned my name and then she doesn't let me actually talk. <laughs> I was giving you time. I saw oh, your note that said you just sure. got out of your car and you're switching okay. your phone. Okay. So yeah, so <laughs> we, like, are, we are very excited now that you're starting to get those commitment letters. And I'm curious, have you gotten commitment letters from any other communities? Um, the only one I know for sure is the city of Laporte. Um, I have uh, had, in, uh, I'm pretty sure, I know I've talked to Hobart and I've talked to Hammond. Um, and they were asking me some questions, so I won't be um, surprised to get them, get any from them. Um, and uh, I'm going to, I guess, talk to the Velpo City Council um, about this. So maybe, maybe that's a positive, potential positive response so far. Um, that's kind of what I have so far um, as far as commitments. Awesome. Um, but it is getting more exciting. I um, uh, you guys are doing a great job of uh, getting the word out and getting the information out to um, the local governments. So, um, so I, 
I have to say that I have been surprised at the response so far. Well, we really appreciate your help and your trust with it. I know, I know you, said you are pretty, pretty, um, you know, at at the limit of what you can do. So we really don't want to um, overburden you. Um, Alyssa, do you think you could pop in the chat the the team tools or or click on the draft? Or it's not a draft anymore. We actually have a final commitment letter. If you could, I see you put the in chat the region resilience, but I'm wondering if you could just put the the letter, because for whatever reason, I'm having trouble moving over to that uh, document and showing the screen. Right. So there is a final version of a commitment letter. So if you are in a town mm -hmm. right now or city or even have connections with your county, the counties right. have all signed a resolution, but now we actually need to go back to them and have them sign the commitment letter to get them to fully commit to the terms right. of this agreement. So the commitment letter, if can I get a little help? Can somebody put that in chat? <laughs> uh, I, I thought I had it ready to, to rock, but, or Kathy, maybe, maybe you would know a little bit. Uh, the deadline, yeah, I can the deadline is talk. December 3rd. And I believe the yeah. resolution that the executive board passed on the 17th of September said that you need to have that at NERPSI by seven business days prior to December 3rd. We've got Thanksgiving in there, folks. So that really means maybe, yeah. um, you know, the 18th, 19th to be safe. We need to get our community. Yeah, that's what I was noticing too, the Thanksgiving. And um, and I, I mean, I don't have it in front of me, but um, uh, my goal with the letter was to make sure that the um, cities and towns would be committing to participate. The um, I, I, I've been around the block a few times and I've had the local governments agree to do something in partnership with NERPSI and then not actually do, can actually, help the project along. So I feel like the commitment letter we have will do a really good job with that um, because there'll be a person who's accountable. Exactly. Um, and then, you know, the more communities we have sign on, the less expensive it gets, it is for the whole, for each one, so. Right, it is a bit of the chicken and the egg right now. You know, we, we don't know exactly yeah. all how much has to be raised. And I know IU is probably going to freak out if we show them how many interns that like we on the team would like. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. we would like five. I know that would be a little crazy because there were only, you know, a little bit more than that for the entire state of Indiana, um, you know, last, last cohort. Oh, dear. Okay, of course, my computer wants to run the security. So, but we do understand that um, there are possibilities where we can get, again, interns through IUN. We've had interest expressed through Valparaiso University and even, you know, citizens who are on this call who have backgrounds. They've said, you know what, this would be an interesting thing that I would like to be a part of. So we'll get more into the nuts and bolts of it. There, there is a recruiting seminar coming up on October 23rd. And um, I did, I'm going to put that link in the chat when we get to our announcements. So if you have those really nitty gritty questions about, um, you know, the process, I would say you might want to go to that. This is kind of a recap story and you know, what's next for the region and, you know, what we're doing that's a little bit different. But anybody that's got those particular uh, questions might be best to attend the 23rd, or I'd be happy to answer some questions, you know, outside of this. Uh, but we've got the commitment letter on screen. And mm -hmm. so this needs to be signed by a community elected official. And we are asking, again, for them to get this to NERPC seven business days prior to the regional application date, which we really appreciate. IU created a regional application just because we are doing this. So they have really worked with us to partner on it and, uh, you know, bust through this paradigm. So we, we need, um, you know, this letter filled in with the information and it says that they agree to paying the cohort participation fee of either $200 or $300, which is for the ICLE, that software program, ClearPath that we mentioned before. So that gives you access to the software so that you can see your data and uh, that you can access it. So that's a minimum investment for any city or county. And paying to NERPC a prorated share of the required internship contribution of $1,500 per intern. We are thinking that two interns can probably do up to about five inventories. So that's where I'm getting, uh, Alex is better at this math, <laughs> quite honestly. But we're thinking if we had yeah. one inventory for each county, 
Laporte, the city, Michigan City's already done it. So that would probably take care of Laporte County. In Porter County, I'd love to get Valpo, Chesterton, Portage, in any other smaller communities that wanted to come forward. We already heard that Oldenburg, you know, only had 600 and something um, population and, and, you know, any size. I don't want to discount anybody. But Lake County, of course, is the most populous county up here. We've talked to Hammond, which has a population of around 80,000. Gary has already participated. I believe their population is somewhere in the neighborhood of 80,000. We've been talking to Crown Point. We're trying to make inroads with Griffith. We've been talking to Hobart, as Kathy already said, uh, Kathy Luther already said. Um, and I'm hearing some background noise. If, if you're not one of our speakers right now, if you could mute yourself until the Q&A, that would be great. That's probably me walking around my house. Was, oh, well, that's I'm okay. sit back down in my office. Yeah, well, Kathy, what else would you <laughs> like to say about NERPC and what, what you need? Um, well, I know in some, some aspects of the, um, uh, of the business inventory, I think we were working to help together, like the, um, we already have a traffic and transportation model. Um, we run anymore, but anyway, um, anyway, for um, a lot of different pollutants and for travel, traffic miles traveled. So that part is really going to be, um, I think, relatively simple. I'm, I'm, a, I'm interested. In some of the other data I've been trying to collect for years, like the solid waste data. So if we can collect it through I, this. I hate to uh, interrupt you, but I'm I having a little great. trouble with your audio. I don't know if anybody else is experiencing kind of a wobbly sound. Um, do you do you have any other options for connecting with your audio? Uh oh, did we lose you completely? Okay, I hope maybe oh, I came. I'm back. Okay. Yeah, I was just, I couldn't really make out well, maybe every third or fourth. Yeah, no, there. it's, that's okay. It's probably my phone and my internet's been cutting out ladies lately. So I think um, I'll just say um, good work to everybody and um, good luck. And if people have more questions about NERPSI's role, um, which would primarily, I think, be, you know, like um, coordinating, providing a, that little bit of, um, assistance for the interns and getting them, making sure they have a computer and a phone and um, and the ability to have like a central central collection place. So um, other than that, I'm going to turn it back to you guys because it's your, it's kind of your baby. Okay. So congratulations. <laughs> well, You've been doing a great well, job. Hey, we're all happy parents right now. So it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much. And, you know, we are really committed to trying to remove whatever barriers we possibly can to make this affordable for communities. Um, you know, we know that environmental impact can sometimes uh, rest a little bit unfairly on uh, communities that are least able to pay for it. So we are really trying to, um, you know, be a community, be a region, and do our fundraising at that level. To that end, we have been doing fundraising already. Uh, this is not quite true that one donor raised or, you know, donated $2,588. That was actually what we did in phase one of our fundraising. I've got to kind of catch that up and thank a lot of the donors who have helped us get that far. A lot of you have been on this call tonight. Really appreciate it. That really showed, you know, NERPSI, I think, and some of these counties and other communities that we mean business. We're here to help. We really want to facilitate this process. So the number that we're showing on screen right now that we're trying to reach in phase two is a pretty big aspirational goal. Uh, we're at about $2,600 and the number on the right is $16,500. What that would fund would be five interns the partnership fee of $1,500 each. It would be five interns, their desk fee, their phone, photocopies, um, you know, all the various things that it's going to take to get that extern here and help them to actually do their job. It's going to take some administrative oversight from NERPC. Um, you know, we're going to try to really minimize that however we can and have our, our team of volunteers. And I will also be happy to help, but we definitely need NERPC's help. So that's where that number comes from, is if we actually end up getting five externs that we could fund, it would be that big goal. Now, cities and or counties, of course, they are encouraged to pay if they can, 
But if, if you've been to any community meetings lately, they're all saying, oh, October, it's, you know, budget. This is really the last thing on their mind. So what I would really love out of this, if people are hearing this live tonight, or if you're watching the replay, is for people to click join this event. It's mightycause.com forward slash event forward slash NWI resilience, or you can go to the nwiresilience.org website and click donate and get to this very same thing. You can just do a straight up donation, but I think what would be really impactful is if people joined this fundraising event and you just said, hey, you know what? I live in such and such town or I'm in such and such club and this is why this project means something to me. You know, if it's just Kathy Sipple's fundraiser or it's just, you know, NWI Region Resilience's uh, fundraiser, I think it's going to have limited reach. But when we all start telling people why we think this is important, I believe that we can hit that, that goal. When you take 16.5 and divide it by 15 communities that could benefit from this, that's an incredible value. When you think that one single uh, greenhouse gas emissions inventory could cost that much if an individual private consultant was hired. So, you know, we'd love to have you join the event. And you know what, even if you can't personally donate by joining the event, you can be a fundraiser and, you know, share it on social media, try to get other people to contribute and share the story, share what you heard tonight. That would be a huge, huge help. Um, yeah, so let me get back to our little spreadsheet here, or excuse me, our PowerPoint. And I think we're very nearly at the end. I just want to say also that, uh, again, there is that recruitment webinar. I'm going to send everybody who signed up for tonight's webinar um, the recording as well as the links to these various different things that we're talking about. And I think we're nearly at the end. Uh, Nancy, do you have any wrap up? I know we want to get into Q and A, but Nancy, yeah, do you Kathy, have anything let's else? Move, let's let's move to Q and A, and we'll do that for a few minutes, and then um, we talked about um, doing the announcements after that. Yes, and then moving into the optional breakout groups if people would love to yeah. stay on with us. I just meant anything that you had about this current topic, so we feel like we've covered no, this pretty well. Everybody's done a great job. Okay, awesome. So we have Kathy Luther with us. We have Aaron Lasher here with us. I'm not sure exactly how long they're going to be able to stick around. Does anybody have questions for a guest? This would now be a time when you can either raise your hand. And if you don't know how to do that, just there's, I think there's few enough, few enough of us on here that you can just unmute and we can do this in a, an orderly way. So does anybody have a question? And if you're too shy to talk, you can also put your question in chat and I'll share it with one of the speakers. I don't have a question, but I would like to mention about the voters guide that I put Walt, a link not, to. Not yet, Walt. Not yet, Walt. That's, that's going to be not an yet. announcement. Okay. From, okay. <laughs> We're just on this topic right now. Thank you, though, for doing that. Um, okay. Yeah, thank you. So I'm going to just say one thing. Elaine, why don't you go ahead, Elaine? Question, could you repeat the information for that fundraiser? I mean, how do you find it? I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, let's see. Alyssa, could I? I, I mean, just the web I, address. What do I type into the computer? Yeah, could I task you with that one more time, Alyssa, so I'm not struggling to um, <laughs> jump around? And I, I will, again, um, send out a link to everything. Okay, thank you so much, Alyssa. She is just awesome, you guys. Somebody needs to hire this young woman for a job because she is great. <laughs> she is so on it, but she just put it in chat. There's a link right there, mightycause.com forward slash event forward slash NWI resilience. And Susan put a question in chat. Have the communities like Gary just done the inventory or does anybody have their climate action plan done yet? Would love to see what that looks like, especially Gary. And um, might let Aaron talk about that. I know, Nancy, you, you wanted Michigan City to be in the Climate Action Plan and kind of had a little change up and you, you do plan to be in that in the second year that it's available. But Gary, I believe, has been working on their Climate Action Plan. Aaron, is that something you can speak to? Yeah, so 
due to COVID, pretty much all of our communities are a couple months behind schedule where we had originally anticipated. So um, they're still in the process of developing their climate action plan. Uh, they received one of the ISDP externs again this summer and um, she has actually continued on to the fall to continue supporting their efforts. And uh, I believe they're hoping to have it done um, probably early 2021 at this point. But yes, uh, I believe it will be shared publicly once it is available. So keep your eye out for that. Okay, great. Thank you for the question and thanks for the answer. Um, anybody else? Is that a plan that has public input was another question from Susan. Yeah, we all we are encouraging all of the communities to gather public input. I believe that uh, Gary has a survey out. I can't remember exactly if it's currently posted or if they're about to post it. I work with 11 of these communities, so it's kind of hard to keep track of each one. But yes, a, a lot of the communities have been doing public engagement and hosting town halls and posting surveys and things like that. And Brenda Scott Henry is the key contact there. So Susan, I, I bet you probably may even know Brenda and she's been very willing to share about this. Uh, she's been appearing on, on quite a lot of different various outreach initiatives with us. Anybody else have a question? Yes, Chuck Damager. And Chuck, please make it about this, not about anything else. Is it about the greenhouse gas emissions inventory? No, no, it's okay. not. Oh, I'll hold on. Yeah, I know you weren't here for the uh, the the initial part. We're going to be doing announcements and other things after this. Okay. So thank you. Um, anybody else have a question for either Aaron, Kathy Luther, or any other questions about the greenhouse gas inventory? All right. Well, you guys are an awfully either knowledgeable or shy group. <laughs> uh, yeah, usually maybe we've already answered all the questions about what is a greenhouse gas emissions inventory. Um, if you'd like to join us, I mean, I just think this is a great baseline. Obviously, taking the inventory doesn't solve, you know, climate issues. But if we can't measure it, we can't solve it. So I think this is just a really huge step that we can take as a region to to get that measurement to achieve that baseline. And um, I know there's some other groups out there that are working on similar initiatives. We have reached out to South Shore Clean Cities. They're doing, I just talked with Carl Lysak yesterday uh, about what they're up to. And we are you know, gonna remain in close contact with them so that we're not duplicating, but hopefully synergizing. Um, so to be continued, but we really appreciate everybody's interest and thanks to everybody for your time. Thanks for all the donations. Thanks for all the support. Really, really, really appreciate it. So. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and we will get into announcements. So I think what I heard was uh, Walter had an announcement about a green um, voter guide that I'm going to go